Where do you go when there's nowhere left to go? The people in these next videos have that all figured out. They want to be left alone, but without having to sacrifice personal style, creature comforts, and total security. No compromises. For some, it doesn't matter how remote, how outlandish, or how unthinkable it might seem to build the house of their dreams. It might just be where you would least expect it. And that's the point. 15 Homes of People Who Hate the Outside World Clingstone Mansion Check out this house built in 1905, perched atop a small, rocky island in an island group called The Dumplings near Jamestown, Rhode Island. The name Clingstone was suggested by a remark that it was a peach of a house. The house is known by locals as the House on a Rock. The dwelling is a three-story, 23-room, 10,000-square-foot, shingle-style cottage. Despite the many stories floating around about Clingstone, the house itself was built in 1905 by J.S. Lovering Wharton, son of the famous industrialist Joseph Wharton. They preferred the island of Jamestown over Newport because the island was much quieter than Newport, which had primarily been settled by New York society. In 1961, a Boston architect named Henry Wood purchased the house for the back taxes owed on the property, which at the time was only $3,600. What a steal! Over the years, Wood slowly repaired the house until it became what you see of it today. Wood's family still uses clingstone for much of the summer, but if you have a spare $8,000 hanging around, you too can rent out the house on the rock for a week. This might sound expensive, but with 10 bedrooms, Clingstone offers one of the most iconic rental properties in the market. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. If you do hate the outside world, this is the home for you. If you envision sitting in your great room enjoying unobstructed vistas and views to die for, far away from society, just know you're not alone. Striving to live the dream, many of us have thought about how cool it would be to build a home on the edge of a cliff. Who doesn't want breathtaking panoramic views of distant mountain majesty or shores from sea to shining sea? Cliff homes date back over the centuries and were once built for protection from one's enemies. Has anything really changed? But when reality sets in, one realizes that the actual house plans for a home literally in a cliff require careful logistics, design, and construction considerations involving specialty engineering and architecture, not to mention the extra costs. But if you hate the world enough, subjects like topography, zoning, permits, not to mention protection against the elements, you might get great satisfaction from crossing them off your list. After all, you hate the world and it shows. Does your cliffside dream house look like this? Let us know in the comments with the hashtag sweet topic. Isolated Iceland Cabin Bizarre theories have swirled around this small building dubbed the world's loneliest house on a remote plot of land to the south of Iceland. According to one rumor, the house was built by a billionaire who planned to move to the remote island in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Other people suggested a religious hermit may be living there. Another popular theory, which was later debunked, said that the Icelandic government had gifted the island to singer Björk. Some even claimed the house didn't exist, but had been a photoshopped version before the pictures were published online. The house was built in the 1930s by five families that permanently lived on the island, surviving by hunting birds and fishing. Not much information is known about the families that lived there in the 20th century, but surely they didn't like to interact with outsiders. The entire island is about 110 acres, and the only wildlife it houses is a Nordic type of bird named Puffin, which is quite a delicacy. The house does not have any electricity or running water. However, it has a complex system that collects rain, which can be used for drinking or washing. The house, despite its age and lack of maintenance, is in very good condition. Tiger's Nest Getting to the tiger's nest is difficult. There's a two-hour climb from the valley floor, which is already quite high at 7,000 feet, to the tiger's nest 3,000 feet above, 10,000 feet above sea level. The temple hangs up on a cliff overlooking the Paro Valley in Bhutan. It's one of 13 small monasteries, or tiger lairs, where a Zen master is said to have meditated in the 8th century. Arrived on a flying tiger, 
then meditated in a cave high on the mountain for four months. Carved into the exposed cliff face are stone steps. Handrails have only recently been added. This is the only way to the Tiger's Nest Monastery. Despite reservations that visitors may have about navigating these intimidating steps, it's common to see locals, including mothers carrying small babies, walking up the steps with ease. As one climbs the well-maintained but very steep trail over ever more vertical switchbacks, the monastery seems to appear and disappear in and out of the trees and the mists. Beneath the rock and across the chasm for the monastery, the cliff drops a couple of thousand feet to the gorge below. The steps lead down into the gorge, which provide the separation and isolation the tiger's nest has enjoyed for all these centuries. <laughs> Bishop Rock Statuesque and majestic, it stands at the very edge of England, a pillar of strength that now protects seafarers from the dangers that lie ahead as they approach. Four miles west of the Isles of Sicily stands Bishop Rock Lighthouse, built in the 1800s to mark a rock ledge the island's most westernly danger. At the time of its build, it was one of the most hazardous and difficult sites for building a lighthouse. Why was this thing constructed in the first place? Shipwrecks. It started in 1707, when ships crashed onto a rock nearby Bishop Rock, killing 1,550 people. The worst crash in the history of the British Isles. Over a hundred years later, Bishop Rock itself was struck, twice. The wrecks prompted the construction of the lighthouse on the westernmost rock to warn incoming ships as early as possible. But after being completed in 1858 and renovated in 1887, the structure has been dubbed King of the Lighthouses. Nowadays, it serves as both a beacon of light for sailors and a miniature hotel for history buffs, looking to live in complete isolation for a few weeks. The lighthouse has also collected world records. When inhabited, Bishop Rock can qualify as the world's smallest island. And year-round, it has the peculiar distinction of being the world's smallest island with a building on it. <laughs> Halley Research Station The Halley Research Station on Antarctica's Brunt Ice Shelf hums away for months at a time completely devoid of life, except for a nearby colony of emperor penguins struggling against the savage Antarctic winter winds and temperatures as low as negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit. For years, the Halley Research Station has been a valuable source of data on space weather and atmospheric chemistry. The long-term collection of data by Halley scientists allowed scientists to discover the hole in the ozone layer in 1985. Built to be mobile, the support beams of the several pods that make up Halley have skis on the bottom, allowing specialized, heavy towing vehicles to pull the entire research station across the ice when needed keeping it one step ahead of the calving of the engineers braving the incredible isolation, blistering cold, and months of 24-hour darkness. Measuring the dynamics of the ice shelf itself is one of the tasks carried out by the survey, which forced the Halley Research Station to relocate to a different section of the ice shelf after a chasm began to form that threatened to cut the research station off from the main body of the ice shelf. Fire Lookout Many people dream of nice cars, a big house, and a posh lifestyle among the elite. But one couple from Dallas ditched that scene for something totally different. A 40-foot tall fire lookout is a forest. They built a fire lookout designed home, known as the treehouse without the tree, on a 160-acre meadow in rural Oregon after they wanted a new start. So they built this 388-square-foot one-bedroom home. The couple decided to build the unique home in Tiller, Oregon after camping in the area for five years and renting lookouts from the U.S. Forest Service. When the home was finished, it was once used as a weekend getaway until they decided to make it their permanent home. The home may seem like the vacation house of a lifetime, equipped with water, electricity, internet, and cell phone service, but there's one important factor that the house does not contain. A bathroom. Instead, the shower is on the deck and the toilet is actually an outhouse in the woods. They didn't want to add a bathroom inside the house because it would hinder their panoramic views. Lookouts were used to spot forest fires from the early 20th century up till the 1960s. To this day, very few fire lookouts remain standing. <laughs> Portuguese Rock House You gotta see this architectural monument located in northern Portugal built from four large boulders that serve as the foundation, walls, and ceiling of the house. 
sensationally dubbed online as a real-life Flintstones house, the Casa de Pinedo doesn't date back to the Stone Age, but to the 1970s. An engineer wanted to build a weekend house for his family to relax in the mountains. This was how the stone house came to be. The rest of the house was constructed mainly out of stone, although other materials were used as well. The staircase, for instance, was built of wood, and the house also has glass windows and a metal door. It's equipped with all creature comforts. Today, it's like a small museum with relics and petroglyphs from Pinedo's history. The house is registered as a mountain shelter. There's no electricity or running water. The entire building is integrated into the boulders and it blends in as part of the landscape. Upon closer inspection, you can see that nothing is straight. The roof, windows, the room shapes, and probably not the floor. But that's the way it is in nature. So, due to its unusual design and integration into the surrounding nature, the building has become a growing tourist attraction. Monastery in the Sky In the western Georgian region, a huge natural limestone column rises 130 feet into the air. It's called the Kachki Pillar. Located just near the charming village of Kachki in Georgia, the uniqueness of this town can be found up high upon the monolith where a small orthodox church stands, which can be reached only by climbing a dangerous iron staircase. After being abandoned and shrouded in a legend for hundreds of years, the rock was scaled in 1944 by a mountaineer. Upon reaching the top, he found the dilapidated remains of the old church as well as the centuries-old bones of the last man who resided there. The monastery building and the surrounding complex were restored and works continue today to allow visitors an experience close to what existed more than a thousand years ago. It's still possible to climb up to the pillar's first level, which holds a prayer area and a 6th century cross marked into the limestone, one of the earliest examples of Christian symbolism in existence today. There's also space to light a candle and pray into an enclosure carved into the rocks. But climbing to the top of the pillars is now forbidden. <laughs> Nola Cabin On the tiny island of Vilasari, just off the coast of Helsinki, sits Nola, which is a wooden cabin designed by designer Robin Falk. Named Nola after the Finnish word for zero, the mobile cabin is built with sustainable materials, local pine and plywood, and is designed to allow visitors to have a zero emissions holiday. The size of a small bedroom, Nola is built from A-frames with a glass front to give guests a direct view of its surroundings. The design excludes most modern commodities, focusing instead on self-sufficiency and low-impact living. As per Nordic tradition, there's no indoor bathroom. Any washroom needs are taken care of in an outhouse. The cabin has a small cooking nook, featuring a stone that can be used for both cooking and heating. The electricity supply of the cabin is generated by solar panels that are attached to the cabin's roof. However, the cabin does not feature Wi-Fi. It's about connecting with the world around you. The NOLA cabin encourages people to consider how modern solutions and innovations could enable sustainable cabin living. Plus, the cabin is the size of a small bedroom and can be assembled and transported without heavy machinery, leaving its environment nearly untouched. Dina River House At the narrows of the Dina River, a curious little house has rested on its rocky perch since 1969. The house was built by a group of young friends looking for a quiet and secluded place to build a retreat. The boys began to transport wood from an old disused warehouse, using makeshift boats and canoes to navigate the river, as well as using the current to float over some of the larger pieces of wood and thus was born one of the country's most iconic wooden houses. Damaged several times by river floods, the house has been rebuilt several times. The house remains thanks to the continuous struggle and tenacity of the inhabitants who are determined to protect and repair it. For more than 40 years, this increasingly famous, nameless cabin has balanced atop of rock in the middle of the river. It's been miraculously spared by the annual rising and falling of waters. Little has changed today as a watery traverse through the swiftly flowing currents of the Dina remained the only way of reaching the rock on which the house sits. Today, this small oasis is a tourist destination who's intrigued by the particular history of the charming and stubborn little house that does not bend to the weather. <laughs> Vegas Bunker If you were to visit this private Vegas home from the street, you would never guess that under it lies a luxurious underground house. 
Built 26 feet underground, this Cold War era home has over 15,000 square feet and has been conceived to make owners feel as if they're a normal house, equipped with a lighting system that can simulate sunlight and twinkling stars. Built in 1979 by a businessman and philanthropist, this underground house reflects the era in which it was created. The owner made sure the residents had every amenity needed, five bedrooms, six bathrooms, a dance floor, a barbecue, and a pool. When he died in 1983, his wife built the townhouse on the surface. Together, this doomsday bunker and the house on top are listed for $18 million, complete with artificial trees, faux rocks, and lifelike scenery, which includes hand-painted murals with scenes from homes the original owner had around the world the underground residence is perfect to entertain guests. With a four-hole putting green, two hot tubs, a sauna, bar, and a pool, there's also a guest house if visitors want to stay the night. Of course, the house is air-conditioned and has cell phone reception, cable, and internet underground. <laughs> Miami Castle with Moat One of the more attractive qualities of the house is that it comes with its own moat to keep out barbarians or unwanted in-laws presumably, and if you're wealthy enough, all that can be yours at Chateau Artesian, this mansion in Miami, Florida, which recently went on the market for $10.9 million. The Gothic-style house has more than enough room for a single family. Inside the house, there's 10,000 square feet of living space, complete with eight bedrooms and eight bathrooms. The complex is completely symmetrical, with two concrete courtyards on either end of the house and gazebos mirrored on the width of the property. Another gazebo lies on the back of the property across the moat with a hedge maze garden. These gazebos in the moat are accessed by stepping stones across the water. Other aquatic features of the property include a koi pond and a pool. Built and designed in 2007, this one-of-a-kind castle was constructed using only the highest quality materials and furnishings. It sits on 14 acres amid a private lake and royal gardens. Modern life can be tough Sometimes you just need to get away from it all and put some space between yourself and everybody else. Sometimes that space needs to be filled with water. <coughs> safe House The Safe House is a two-story residential house located on the outskirts of Warsaw, Poland that aims to provide a feeling of maximum security. True to its name, the most distinguishable element of the design is the movable exterior wall components that allow the house to be completely closed to its environment or open and connected to the rural landscape. The actual living space runs up to 6,100 square feet spread over two floors, and that doesn't include the adjoining swimming pool annex that's accessed via a neo-medieval retracting drawbridge. The walls adjust to provide a safe zone that extends out to encompass the front courtyard while separating children from the public street in front of the house. And all the movable components are mechanically operated with built-in electronic engines. Though monolithic in plain view, the safe house is actually quite organic as it can change its appearance and function depending on the need of the moment. The whole house as well as the mobile elements are clad with cement bonded particle boards Cetrus and waterproof alder plywood fixed to steel construction and painted with dark wood stain, which makes it fit well into the rural landscape. <laughs> Floating Homestead There's no place on Earth like Vancouver Island, British Columbia, specifically Tofino. It just happens to be Canada's surfing capital, too. Tofino is also an ideal place to get off the grid. Just ask these folks. They made Freedom Cove, a man-made floating island, homestead, art installation, all in one, and a home for almost 30 years. And they chose Freedom Cove's location because there's access to fresh water and because it offers great protection from Canada's winter storms. What started as a small float home made of wood that's washed ashore after a storm, the creative couple gradually added new buildings, greenhouses, and even a dance floor to create a fully off-grid floating homestead. Freedom Cove is also very self-sustaining. They used flotation technology that's been recycled from fish farms nearby. The couple grows most of their own food, uses a mix of solar panels, a generator, propane, and firewood for energy, and has a new microbial wastewater system to live their life with as little carbon footprint as possible. This paradise off Vancouver Island may look idyllic to people fantasizing about off-grid living, 
but Freedom Cove took a huge amount of imagination and experience to build, and it requires a lot of work to keep it running. The Ark South Poland's picturesque green and mountainous landscape was a key inspiration for the architecture firm behind this residential offering, situated in the rolling hills of Brenna. Upon closer inspection, it's not hard to imagine how the visually striking Ark got its name. The home becomes vulnerable to landslides due to its slope-side location, which can be a frequent occurrence in this part of the Polish mountains. To safeguard the building, the architects created a design that floats above ground, giving the art its abstract boat-like aesthetic while allowing for water and mud to flow underneath freely without damaging the property. Due to the plot's location, remote and deep within natural wilderness, a concern for security was addressed by twisting the main volume so that only one of the home's corners in fact makes contact with the earth. This is also where the house's main entrance is situated, with the rest of the building being suspended in the air. This entrance is protected by a drawbridge, the same reason led the architects to decide that the best possible garden solution for this house would not be to have one, and let the existing fields become the Ark's ample backyard instead. After all is said and done, home is where the heart is, and for the people who built these homes, they clearly put a lot of heart into these dwellings. A lot of thought, too. It's fascinating to see how these people live. <laughs>